Ah, jo, gå om. Oops, cap, no. Right, welcome to fabulous Hayton Lakes near Retford. What a complex. And uh, we've got one of their hard fighting. I don't know if it's a great big F1 or a cat. I think it's a cat. It's fighting well and we're fishing bomb. Oh, it's a little uh, Miro carp, and uh, looks a five pounder. And it's that time of year now where it's going to be loose feed a lot, loose feed pellets. And and what I've done is just flip. There you go. Look, look at that. Hey, oh, come on, baby, little carp. Look at that. It's fighting this one. It's trying to get its money. And. Uh, there you go. So, first fish is in the night. Well done, Pickering. So, this is Ayton Lakes near Retford. What a complex. Can't believe how many lakes there is and different kinds of fishing. And it's mainly carp and, and great big F1s. Um, it's got a bit of an up back on it, this one. And, but anyway, so. About five pounds, so good start that. And and then they're just waiting up now because we've seen a few fish top as well, so we've seen them moving about. And we're here, and what we're going to do, we're doing bomb fishing because it's spring, and what happens is the fish start moving about and swimming about now, so they're looking for bait. And so we're going to fish pellets, and hopefully, hopefully later on in the day, when it warms up a bit. We'll catch some fish on a on a waggler, um, but there's telltale te signs that tells you whether you've got to fish a waggler or whether you've got to fish a pellet when you're doing this kind of fishing. And uh, I'm going to go through them and show you. So let's get back in and try and catch another fish. But that's a good start. I'm happy. Well, it's going to be that time of year when the fish start moving about in the swims. It's getting a bit warmer now. The water temperature. The fish are moving. They're coming up in the water. And tactics are going to change a little bit. We might be fishing more bomb and pellets uh, with a waggler when the fish come up, or just fishing shallow on the pole. So what happens now is we might be feeding a bit more bait. And if you're going on a commercial fishery, that a fishery only pellets like these are, like that, do you just get them out of the bag like that, put them in a tub and fish with them? Well, you can if you want, but you know where I'm like, I don't like to do that. I like to be a little bit different. I like to add things that are different from all the other fishermen. So what I'm going to add to these, I'm going to add some, some uh, colourings and some, uh, some attraction, fish attractions. So what am I going to put in? Well, first of all, I'm going to have one, which I'm just going to put my sweet one in. That's my sweet sensei, which I really, really love. And all you do, it's as simple as this. Put some 6mm pellets in a tub. Squirt some attraction on. These won't dye them. This particular one, this sweet sensei, won't dye them. But what it'll do, it'll flavour them and make them that lovely thing. And just do that, basically. And what I do, I just do that and leave them. It's the first thing I do when I get to the peg. And you can see now that all them lovely fish attractants are on the pellet. A little bit different than what other anglers are doing. However, if I want to colour them, I'll use a different one. I'm going to use a Sensei fish attractant bait dyes, which are them. Now they come in a natural colour, they come in red, yellow or green. So for example, if I want to dye them green and still add the, the fish attractant, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a squirt in, like that, check them up, and it's, a, it's about how many is in the tub and how dark that you want the pellets. But I like to be different than most people. You can see them already within seconds are going green. And if you want to get them greener, just add a little bit more. You don't have to add a little bit more, but I'd like them just a tad greener than that, so you just add a bit more. And what you've got to remember about these bait dyes and flavours as well is they don't swell the pellet up. Now that's very important because some do. Some colourings and attractions that you can put on swell the pellet up and make it bigger and softer. Well, I don't want that because I'm going to give you a little tip in a second. Because the thing is, when they've soaked in, them two in there, the natural one, the sweet one and the green one, when they soaked into the pellet, they make the pellets uh, heavier as well. So when you're firing them out, they'll go out further a little bit because they're a heavier pellet. So they don't only uh, colour them, give them nice attraction to make the pellet heavier so they'll go out further when you're firing them out with a catapult. 
Now them sixes, it, they're done basically. All I would do them, I get to my peg, I do them first, and then what I do, I get my tackle ready. But them's on sixes. And if you want them done on fours, you can do them on fours as well. You do them on eights, any size you want. And all I do, basically just squirt in and done. And then when I do my micros, I do them all in the different tubs and the different colours. You can do that as well if you want, because when you put them in, they don't mix. And you can see that they're mixing easy. So, not only are they getting colour colourful, you're getting fish attractant, you're getting that lovely sensate flavour in, makes them heavier. When you fire them out with catapult, they go further out. And that's how I prepare my bait. Now spring's come, the fish are feeding, the fish are coming off the bottom, and they're being more active. That's what I do with my pellets. So why why bomb and waggler? Well, it's quite simple really. I can fish the two methods over the same line. And in spring what happens is the fish start becoming more active and they start swimming about in the reeds, coming up into the water. So the idea is to, to use two tactics over the same amount of bait. For example, if I'm going to get my catapult and I put some bait in and I fire them in like that, makes a lovely noise on the water and it goes drrr on the water. So usually to start, you start on a bomb and you're casting where them pellets are and you're watching the tip. And what happens is, the moment you start to get like a little indication then, just a little indication which tells me the fish are coming to the pellets. So sometimes when the fish are feeding close to the bottom, the bomb's the best and usually at the start the bomb's the best. So you're casting in, feeding, casting in and feeding. But the moment I start going dink, 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 I pick my wagon rod up because that tells me the fish are active in mid-water and usually you start off at mid-water and then the secret is if you're missing bites you shallow up and if you don't get so many bites you go deeper, that's in principle. So the idea is the pellets on the water make a noise, all in one area, you don't have to use three and four areas, you can fish it just comfortable over one area, fire your pellets in, throw your bomb out and the bomb tells you when you're going to catch on the waggler because if you're casting and, you, and it's like that and you fire some pellets in and it goes dink 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 as they're falling through the water that tells you the fish will come off the bottom the feeding mid water pick your waggler rod up and trust me if they come on the waggler it'll be quicker because it's instant and you'll get bigger weights so that's why i fish the two methods over the same line because i can i can feed t one line fish two methods but remember the fish tell you where they are in the water to tell you which method that you're going to fish if you're not getting no indications no liners bomb will be the best but if you're getting loads of indications and liners the fish are off the bottom and waggler will be the best right well we've got that fish first cast which were really encouraging uh, five pound mirror and i've had two little indications that have gone just moved a bit and i've actually had one where it's dropped back even though I don't have a bend in my rod, it actually the line went slack and I picked up thinking that we're on and it won't. I thought I actually thought that were a bite because I don't like to pick up on liners. I think it's especially when it's hard, you never pick up on liners. I thought that were a bite. I thought the fish had picked the pellet up and, and brought brought it up and lifted the bomb up, but it but either it got rid of it or it hadn't. So but I've had enough indications to think that I'll catch some fish during this during the afternoon. I've not had enough indications to think I've got to pick my waggler rod up yet, um, but I'm sure as day goes through, because there's a few fish active, and like I say, I've had a couple of indications. So I'll keep trying, and uh, eventually, hopefully, it'll go round, and we'll have a we'll have a good spell, and which uh, and it, which means I can pick my waggler rod up and have a little cast. But the most important thing, even though you're not catching, you keep feeding. Keep feeding, keep feeding the pellets with the uh, with the flavourings and the colourings on them all the time. I like a little continuous bait going through the swim all the time. That's to encourage fish to make some noise on the water and the fish hopefully loam in eventually. My setup is pretty simple. I've got a 10 foot light carp feeder rod. Uh, if I'm fishing further out I'll probably use my 11 foot. I've got a 4,000 size reel and I've got 0.26 real line on and uh, you might think well it's pretty thick but I don't think it makes any difference so you might as well use a, a thicker line and that is I've got inline bomb like that straight forward um, that's just a, a 10 grammer but you can use a 15 or a 20 depends on the distance that you're fishing but that's straightforward 
and that goes on a quick change bead. Now, one of the reasons I like these quick change beads is it bounces. I don't like it fixed. I don't like it. I don't like the uh, it to go inside or anything like that. I like it as pre-running as you can get it. And the quick change bead is quite simple, so I can change between hook lengths, uh, different baits, and everything. You just take the loop off. There's a little loop on that, and you just put that that in like that and put the, the lid back on and th it's as simple as that one of the keys is the distance between that and, and your hook bait the hook length is quite important with different baits for example sometimes when the fish are really feeding I'll have a six inch hook length um, but with corn I've always found it's better with ten I don't know why but when I'm fishing with corn I like it just slightly longer than I do with a pellet but so you, you have to vary that and that varies on the on this timing of the bite. In fact, going in and, it's, and I'm getting indications, I use it a six inch one, but when I'm fishing for a few fish, I tend to use it probably 10, in, 10 inch or 12 inches. But when I'm fishing with corn, then it needs to be a bit longer. I don't know why, but that's just the way it works. Simple setup like that, and that's all that I do, to be honest with you. Right, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, when do I feed and how do I feed? Well, there's two ways of feeding and when you're fishing a bomb and one is this you don't cast in when the fish are active and they're moving this is how you feed you fire your pellets in first so you fire them like that, they eat the water you've got your rig you haven't cast down and what you've got to do now is cast in them you've got to try and think when they're going to hit the bottom and cast in and make sure that your bomb lands in, in where the pellets have it and they're falling through your bomb goes to the bottom and of course your pellet is going down with the pellets and hopefully the fish are intercepting them and they'll pick up and it's amazing how many times now the rod will be round that's when the fish are active and it almost tells you you've got to try the waggler but it's so quick so when the fish are coming to the pellets you fire the pellets in first and then what you do you cast your bomb with your hook bait in the middle of that and then the other way is when it don't really matter when the fish are not active and you and you've got to leave it in for a long time you don't have to feed to start with you can if you want it's not a, it's not really a, a big problem but you don't have to waste time with, with, with your hook bait in your hand and all you're going to do when you fish waiting for a long time is cast put it in position set everything up when it is the bottom set it up and sink your line make sure that it's sank nice and then feed because the, the fish are not active they're swimming into the bait you can get away with not having to feed before you cast in and then you can feed while your rig's in the bottom so that's two ways so if the fish are active and they're coming to the pellets you feed cast your bombing but when they're not you can cast your bombing and feed on top of the on top of your hook bait. Them's the two ways that I feed. in and had a few indications so I'm just going to have a cast with waggler just to see now I'm not sure they're ready for waggler yet but one of the things that you do when you fish a waggler is you keep your eyes open one for indications on the tip especially when you fire your, your pellets out and two for cruisers or fish swimming about and looking and that sometimes you can cast to them so it's quite simple really I've loaded my got my waggler it's 11 foot pellet waggler rod and it's loaded up with my reels loaded up with 0.20 line it's not as thick as the line I'm going to be using on the feeder because I'm in and out more now then on the I've got a 16 hook uh, to 016 and 
no shot whatsoever on the line. I've set it at three foot deep to start with, but that can alter, like I said, if you're getting lots of bites and missing them, you shallow up. If you're not getting as many bites, you can deepen up. But I've got just a loaded float. There's no shot on the line. And that's a six gram uh, float. I've got a float stop above it and two below it. And the reason why there's two below it is quite simple. When you're casting, you're putting the pressure on them two. So you put two on as a security thing so they don't open up when you're casting. And the idea of, of a pellet waggler is it's all what I call instant fishing. So all I'm going to be doing, first thing I'm going to do, I put that in the water like that, ready for casting. I pick my catapult up and I'm going to cast six to eight pellets this time of year, maybe a few more in the winter. Flick them wherever they land and then wherever they land I'm trying to get these in the my float and my pellet in the middle of them. And the idea is this, when they come up, fish come up for the pellets and they're taking them, when you cast it in there's two plops, one from the float and one from the pellet. And the idea is they'll come to the pellet, they see the float, there's no bait there, and then they'll go pick that up. And usually, when you're going to catch on this, it's usually really, really quick. So all I'm going to do now is cast, break, and what you're trying to do is make the pellet go past the float so it plops on its own. You leave it, you do not move it. It's really important that because the fish are coming to the splash. It's all about making the splash, making it nice. And what I usually do, I only usually give it 20 seconds to start with. When the fish are feeding, you've normally got a fish on now. When the fish are active, you, you do, it's one of them. Very rare you catch on a suspended bait. It's very rare indeed. So the next procedure is when I've got it, I don't know, 30 seconds, you, you never just give it 20. You wind it in put it, the rod in the casting position like that, pick your catapult up and fire a few more pellets in. It's really quick fishing where I call it. So you cast them in, bring it back and what I'm trying to do now is, is put that, the pellet goes past, past, the, uh, past the float and, and you don't move it. They come to the splash so the idea is to get it in the right position to start with, so it casts, the float lands on the water, your pellet goes over, goes plop, and that's what you're trying to do. The fish come up and they intercept it and take it. That's what you're trying to do. If you put your rod tip under and sink your line like that, what happens is you brought, there you go, oh, that would bite that. That would bite that. And what I did, it, uh, I was just going to sink my line and it went. I can't believe I missed it because normally what happens is you don't miss them. So again, same position, like that, same position, feed a few, like that, all time, quick fishing, pick your rod up, and all you're trying to do now is get your hook bait in the middle of them that's falling through the water, so you cast it, break, the pellet goes over, plop, and hopefully it'll fish, I did, that were a fish that it actually took line, didn't took it, can't believe it, now you go and just sit there, Just sit there waiting. Not long. Honestly, if, if when the fish are feeding, the, you usually catch them within 10 seconds. Sometimes it's actually instant. No, no fish. And you're working your peg all the time. If you sit there and wait for it to go under, it probably never go under. Don't get me wrong, you can catch a fish doing any kinds of fishing. But when you're catching lots of fish, this is the best way and the quickest way. Like I said, I'm, I'm surprised I've actually had a bite. Break, oh it went, landed lovely that. Float landed a plop on the water. The pellet went over and went, and went nicely. Now, now that was the perfect, what you're trying to do basically is make the same sound with your hook bait as loose feed that go in, because they're not daft fish, they know what they are. And you, you're trying to make them compete by firing them loose offerings in. You tr what you're trying to do is uh, just put yours in the middle of them and they're just coming and they're just snatching sitting up themselves. But it's a great way of catching fish and a fast way when the fish are wanting it at mid-water and they're actually on the surface. But I'm not quite sure it's ready for it yet. But there's no doubt about, about it when it's on, this is the best and the quickest way of getting fish because it's instant. I mean, sometimes if you want, you, what I do sometimes, uh, I'll lift, because your line's on the surface, you don't sink your line. You can lift it up like that 
and just lay it down again. And what it does, it moves the float towards your bit, but it also lifts the pellet up and it drops again. And sometimes that gets you an odd fish because you don't just keep chucking it in, you can do that as well. So what you do, you lift your line and just place it again like that about two meters and, and it comes forward this way. And it's amazing sometimes you can catch a fish like that as well. But as long as it's lifted and then dropping again, that's all that you're trying to do. And if it don't work, you just keep going through that same procedure all the time. But it is a great way, but whether we'll catch one or not is a different matter, although I did have a bite. So we could have had a but same routine feed. Trying to get your hook bay in the middle of them. Lovely, that'll be beautiful that landed lovely. Sometimes what happens when you're doing this and and you keep just moving it like that, keep your eyes out elsewhere because if you see a fish on the surface and move, winding and cast to it, it's amazing how many times you can catch that fish. So for example, I'm fishing my main spot here and all of a sudden I see a fish top out there. What I'll do, I'll wind in wherever it's topped, I'll just cast to it. And it's a, but strangely enough, you'll only get one chance and you cast it in like that. And it's amazing how many times you can catch that fish, but you only get one chance. If you don't get it first time, you won't catch it. So you have to wind back in. So that's why you're always looking and keeping your eye out for a fish moving in the water. And if you don't, then you go back to your spot and you go back to the same routine, feed. The thing is about this way, you're feeding your peg as well all the time. All the time you're feeding your peg, you've got bait falling through. So if it don't work, just go back onto your bomb underneath it. Right. We just had a few fish, but I'm, I, want to, I need to try my maggot line. So I've got the same bomb, same inline bomb, it's like a, a 10 gram that with quick change bead. Because it's a quick change bead, I can just change and put milk bait on, which is two, two red maggots, live ones, because I'm firing live ones in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a chuck on my maggot line just to see if they want any maggots. And you'll know first chuck usually when goes in you'll know first cast because you'll get indications because I've been feeding it for a while now but what you mustn't do what you mustn't do is stop feeding your, your other line your pellet line so even though I've got two ways of fishing it's important that you keep feeding both all the time because you just never know because if they're not here if they don't want to be on this line on the maggot and you'll know pretty quick, usually the first, I always say the first cast after you've rested is the most important cast that you're going to do because that tells you. Because if you've been feeding it for a while and you cast it in, you, you can bet your bottom doll it will go first cast. And I always say the first cast after everything is really important. So I've been feeding maggots there, so I'll keep feeding them, but you must keep feeding your other line, which is, in this case is my pellet line because I might have to go on that. Now it does a couple of things this. You find out one that I, I, I doesn't want maggot. And secondly, it rests my pellet line. And as long as you'll keep feeding it the same, by giving it a rest, it's amazing how many times you cast it out then, and it'll go first cast, there you go. How, how good's that on maggot? How good's that? Now then, how about that? First cast, it, it hadn't been in a minute. And like I said to you, it's the most important cast. But how, how good was that? Hey, that, I mean, I've fished all that time. Look at that lovely F1. Look at that, I just fished an 18. Look at that beautiful fish, that. On double maggot. With our red Sensate powder. So, it's, it, so the pellets have got all that lovely flavouring. And they can't resist it, can they? They just can't resist it. 
and that were literally a minute. I mean, at the end of the day, you saw me cast it in, and it nearly dragged the rod in. Look at that, that's a five, four pound of that. Oh, careful. So calm down, calm down. We're nuts at this. Okay. You can tell spring's coming. Oh! That's not fair, that, is it? Bleep, 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 bleep. Ah yeah, well, we got one on anyway, so guess what? I'm going in again. Just pulled out of that. That one's in a minute. I can't wait to get back in now and again. Right, here we go. So I'm going to cast it in on that line again. Plop. Straight to bottom. Sink the line. Let's see what happens. And remember, pick it up. Like that. Put your rod down and feed both lines. I can't stress that enough. All the time, feeding. So I'm feeding my maggots on my, obviously my maggot line, but you mustn't stop feeding your pellet line because you might have to go back to that one. So all the time you're feeding. Fish, especially F1s, I love it falling through all the time. Carp are a little bit different, but F1s love it falling through. It was that quick that I couldn't finish me a cup of tea. So, I just had a little walk waggler and not got one. First cast. The first cast is so important when you are feeding, and especially when it's not solid. The first cast on the chain is one of the most important things. And look at this, look at that for an F1. Oh, it's a Supreme. Oh, look at that. Oh, crikey. They love Sensate as well. Look at that. It's, a, it's not a skimmer, that. That's a Bream. Oh, 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 look at that beauty. Four pound, that. It's a Southfield fish. The size of that. <laughs> oh, it's, I can't get my fingers. That's nearly four pound, that. I can't get my fingers around that. Can you only tell the side by how I, I get them? Look at that beauty. Well, one thing you'll never do is ever turn them down like that. Never. Four pound bream, get in there. <laughs> but that was first cast again. And it's one thing that, especially winter and when it's, you know, fish, fish are not feeding. And that's why I feed two lines, because I know when I've rested it, the first cast is really important. And I've had three fish now by the first cast. So, that's why you never stop feeding. All you do is feed your two line, whether you're on them or not. And when you go on it, the first cast tells you. There you go. I hope we get some more like that. Four pound bream, can't fault them. We never get fed up of catching them. So all I'm going to do now is when I've set my rod up, feed the line that you're on first. So I'm going to so because I'm on my maggot line, I'm going to feed my maggots, and I'm going to put a few more. I'm going to put two little pouchfuls in, with with the maggots, and then you feed the other line that you're not on. So all us feed the line that you're on first because you're fishing it, and then your other line. Now that. If I don't get a bite, this cast or a fish, I'll be going onto my pellet line because I've rested it a bit now and I reckon when I cast out on it, it'll go first cast. You might not get one second. Don't ask me how it works that way. I ain't got a clue. All I know is that's how it works. So the harder it is, and this is why you feed more one and two lines, sometimes three. 
if you've got the space, sometimes you feed three. And I don't know how it works, but it's amazing how many fish you catch on the first cast after you've rested the line. It's amazing. And sometimes I actually go on another line knowing I'm not going to catch a fish, but I've got to rest my main line. So I sacrifice 10 minutes of me fishing, no, probably knowing I'm not going to catch a fish, but I've got to rest the ma main line that I think I'm going to catch most of my fish on. And uh, so, uh, but I know that when I go on it first cast, I'll catch one. It's amazing sometimes you've got to sacrifice doing something you don't want to do just to make sure that your main line, your main swim, is, is the fish come back in and start feeding. So when you go back in, you catch it first cast. Right. So I've had me, me, I had a fish first cast. I've had two indications on the maggot line, but it's been. 20 minutes now and I know what I need to do now I need to go back on my pellet line and it's quite simple one of the one of the things I love about um, is this is I'll pull my bomb line in I take my quick change bead undo like that and I can take the hook bait off the, whichever it is in this case it's maggots and I can put a pellet now then that's how quick it is to set up. So you can have different up lengths. So I'm set up and I'm ready. Now then, like I said, the first cast is, is really important. Now I've caught three fish on the first cast each time. And it's one thing when I take people coaching, and I do it myself, when I ever have the first cast after a rest, I don't do anything. I don't have a cup of tea, I don't have a sandwich, I don't have anything, because I know how important it is. So let's see. There we go. Gone down. Right, now then, let's see what happens because I never, I, as much as I'll have my flask, I never pick it up on the first change over. Never ever. And this is why you, you feed two lines, three lines, so you can do this, so you can have the first casts. So I'm setting it up now. And get it set up. I might feed them, I feed my lines, but I don't do anything else about that because I know how important it is. So I'm just going to feed a few pellets, but I don't pick my flask up, I don't have a drink, I don't have a sandwich or anything. But, but I feed my lines and then I get ready. And it's amazing when you catch it, it's, one of the things I always find quite weird is you only catch it pretty quick. But then you shoot back in, you don't get one. I, 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 sometimes I can't put my finger on it myself, but I'm not, I'm an angler that thinks that's what works. That's what happens. So that's what you have to work with. So if I were in match conditions here, because I've got quite a bit of space, I'd probably have three swims going. I might have two pellets and a maggot one, and but I know that I can chuck between them and have the first cast on each one if I want. But when the fish are feeding, then you'll get more than one fish, so you don't have to do that. But when it's hard and the fish are sort of in winter mould and things like that, and you're, you're fishing for a fuel fish, that's how you catch a fuel fish. And it's one of the things that I always say, swim management. Swim management is the most important thing about fishing. There you go. That's it, that were in two minutes. First cast again. Two minutes. I think it's an F1. And sometimes that's how it is. It's just when when the fish, when you're in winter and spring, when you're after like 20 fish, if you're lucky. You know, when you think about it, it's only one every 15 minutes in a five hour match. And that's what you have to do is manage your swims. If you keep chucking it down the same place all the time, They'll just back off, so you've got to make them come and catch a fish here and there. Look at that. That's first cast again on maggot on pellet line. Lovely F1. Look at that beauty. So, do I have another cast? Well, of course you do. It's hard not to, because if you're going to get a weight... That's a big one, that's five pound, that. Because if you're going to get a weight... You took two reasons. One, one uh, if you're going to get a weight, you'll catch, one, you'll catch more than one fish off it. 
And secondly, you've got to give that other swim enough time to get a fish, if that makes sense. You want to be giving it 20 minutes. Well, that was literally two minutes. So what I don't want to do is go on the other line. Because if I go in the other line, I've gone in too soon and I won't get one. It's about timing it. And you, you think, well, I might have a beautiful fish. That was five pound, that. Um, so I've got to go back on this line to rest my other line, if that makes sense. So there you go. Two minutes worked again. I've just had two, three, two, two fish in two puts on my pellet line. I thought I'll just have a last cast on my maggot. I've rested it for quite a while now. First cast again, it's gone round and we've got this F1. So, so I've had a lovely day. Finished off with a nice F1, three and a half pound F1 on Maggie, and uh, to be honest with you, it's been a lovely day, and hopefully you've learnt a few things about changing and feeding, because that's what we're about really, is feed your two lines, and the first cast on the lines, when you cast, is really important in fishing. I think it's, for me, it's really important, it, especially when it's fishing stuff, rest and cast, rest and cast, and that's what I do. So we're finished off with a lovely F1, and uh, hope you learnt a few things. <laughs>